Right, today we're going to talk about uh, this question, okay, in organic chemistry. It says organic compounds A to E below are labeled, are all produced below, are all produced by living organisms. So you got, a, you got like a summary of organic uh, papers, organic um, um, compounds. Now, state the systematic name of compound A. So compound A is this one here, okay. So the first thing you could do, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going hept. Then you got one, two, three. So it'll be hept and three all, four methyl. So it's going to be carbon number four. It's got four methyl um, hepton two all. Okay, so that's the first question then. Then it says compound D reacts readily with hydrogen chloride in the addition of the reaction. The two products form for this reaction, but one, uh, two products are formed in this reaction, but one product is formed in much greater amounts of than the other. So what, draw the structure of both possible addition products for this reaction. So you're looking at compound D, which is this one here. Okay, so that's your compound D. So if you add HCl to here, so the H's will go where most H's are because it's not um, a symmetrical compound, it's an symmetrical compound or non-symmetrical compound. So if you look at that, there's an H here, if you can see, there's no H's here because there's a double bond here. So see that two, two R groups, one H, one R group there. So the H will go where most H's are, okay? So the first major product is going to be this. All you do, you just put like that, just draw that. The double bond disappears, so H was there and Cl goes there. But you already got one methyl, so you can put Cl there if you want to. Okay, so that's the major product. The minor product, you put H there, just flick the H to the top one, and the H, the, the Cl to the top one, and H goes in the bottom. So you draw exactly the same, okay, like that. And then instead of putting a Cl here, you put a Cl here. Okay, and then remember everything else stays the same and there's a methyl group attached to it. So that's your major, okay, and that's your minor because that goes where most H's are, okay. The reason for that is that this is a tertiary, forms a tertiary carbocation, okay. So the tertiary carbocation is here, so that's where the major uh, the major group is formed because tertiary carbocation is more stable than secondary carbocation, okay? And therefore, uh, it goes via tertiary carbocation. In this case, it's going to be one, two, three, carbon number three, one, two, carbon number two, okay? So carbon number three is more favorable than the other one. Setting explain which of the two possible products will be formed in greater uh, amounts. So that's what I just said. Include a diagram of the intermediate and the mechanism for this reaction in your answer. Okay. So to answer this question, I've already drawn this for you, right? So you, you know, don't waste time listening to me or see me drawing. So basically, that's your your carbocation. So that one is the third. It's got one R group, two R groups, three R groups. So that's a positive there. The Cl minus will attack there, and will go to the bond it to that one there. So that's your tertiary carbocation. The tertiary carbocation is the most stable than the secondary carbocation, so I should put carbo here, okay? The major product goes via tertiary carbocation instead of secondary carbocation, which is the C3, so that's the C3, carbon 3, because you've got carbon 1, 2, and 3, so carbon 3, and the minor product goes to, to, to carbon 2, so that one is carbon number 2, which is 1 here, 1, 2, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So that's the answer to that question. Right, the next bit says 4.125 grams of compound D is reacted with excess hydrogen chloride. The mixture of products contain 95% by mass of one product and 5% by mass of the other product. Calculate the mass of each product formed. Now, how did I do this question? So I started by drawing that. So if you say you have your first product plus HCl, 
will give you that product. Not bad. That one is going to be the first one I add, plus that product there. Oh no, I don't put the double one there, sorry. That product there. Uh, CL here, double one here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's 95% because you know that's the major product, and that one is 5% because it is the minor product. So, what we have to do now first, what how we do it, I'm going to explain to you. First, you know that calculate any percentage yield, percentage yield equals to actual moles divided by theoretical moles times 100, okay? Or you can put percentage yield there times divided by 100. So this is the format that I used. So we say we work out the theoretic yield first. The theoretic yield says is you start by working out the moles of that. So when you work out the moles of that, it's going to be, you need to work out MR of that, which is MR equals to 110 grams per mole minus one. So that's MR of that. So the mass was, the mass was 4.124125 grams. So you work out the moles of that. I think I'm using a lot of space. No mind. So work out the moles of that. So the moles of that is going to be uh, 4.125 divided by 110, which gives me 0 0.0375. So that's your theoretical moles calculated. So now you know the percentage yield. So you say, okay, this is, we're going to work out the 95% first. So 95%. So I put 95 divided by 100 of actual moles divided by theoretical 0 0.0375, okay? So they say the MR of this is, if you work out the MR, you got, um, let me just say, MR of both compounds are C7H11. C O C L O C L because you just count them. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then C L and all of that. It's both the same, okay? So if you got MR, so you would say um, zero point zero three seven five times MR, which is I'll calculate it to be. Um, just working out here, hold on, 146.5, okay, so that'll give me, the amount of this gives me a mass of, no, sorry, and then so the MR is 146.5, so the next thing you do, you work out this equation there, which is 0 0.0375 times 95 divided by 100 for the 95%, okay, that will give you, um, just check, 0 0.0356 moles. Then you take 0 0.0353 moles times your molar mass, MR, and that will give you for 5.22 grams for the 95% product there. So if you want to work out what happens to the 5%, I would just do the same calculation. So it'll be here, I'm going to put it here. 0 0.0375 times 5 divided by 100. Okay. And then that will give you 1.875 times 10 minus 3. And then if you multiply that by 146.5, it will give you 0 0.275, which to, for me gives you 0 0.28 grams, okay? So the 5% one is 0 0.28 grams, and the 95% one is 5.22 grams. So that's how I work out both, both amounts. I hope that was helpful for you to understand. If you don't understand, just please send me a message and I'll redo it again. Thank you. Bye. Right. This next question is analysis of one of the compounds A to E shown below. So they don't tell you which compound it is. 
Percentage composition by mass is this one here. Infrared spectrum is here, because I marked it here for the, the peak. There's no peak in here at all. Uh, usually it's in here for the C double bond hole. Using information to identify the compound, explain the reason referring to all evidence. So you need to talk about everything you got here. So if you look at the infrared spectrum, looking at the infrared spectrum, there's a peak between 3,600 to 3,300 or otherwise. Uh, I got this right away now, 2,300 to 3,600, okay? So you've got to say there's a peak, there is a, uh, would you say broad peak? Broad peak between... 3,300 to 3,600, which is for OH, for OH present, okay, because there's no peak, there's no peak here at 1,700 here, that means there's no C, C double bond O present, okay, so that tells you that it is there's, you can write here, no peak at C double bond O between at 1,700, I think. Um, I think usually 1,700. Therefore, no C double bond O present. You don't have to say this, but just to explain, okay? Because that means if there's no cedar bond or present, that means it's an alcohol. Therefore, compound is an alcohol. So if you look at all the pigs, it will tell you which one it is. So this one here is an alcohol. Okay. Uh, this one here is an alcohol. This one here is... Um, see the one here that's no alcohol here so there's between that and that okay so we need to decide which one is going the next stage here it shows your composition by mass here so you work out your empirical formula okay so I'm going to work out the empirical formula right to finish this uh, this calculation you put I worked out already the empirical formula so 78.94 10.53 10.53 Divide that by 12, because it's a molar mass of carbon. Divide that by 1, because it's a molar mass of hydrogen. Divide by 16, is a molar mass of oxygen. That'll give you 6.58, 10.53. Uh, and then it gives you 0 0.58, 0 0.658. Yeah. So if you divide by the smallest one here, that will give you 10. So everything divided by the smallest one, give you 10, 16, and 1. So if you look at your equation, you got C10, H16, oxygen, okay? So that will show you that that one is only got seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus one, eight carbons. So that one is got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten carbons. So it works for this. Then you got ten carbons. And so the molar mass of this is C10, H16, oxygen. So then you know your compound is C, and now you've proven that, okay? So that's your final question for um, this paper, 2021 OCRA, but it's actually an um, uh, assessment paper. Thank you, bye. Just to finalize the nice look, this is my uh, main chemistry student, which is called Hugo, and he's showing no interest in learning whatsoever. And then I've got the other one here, which is my Roscoe. He's got no interest in learning whatsoever. So it looks like chemistry is not that thing. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.